It's estimated that 80% of serious medical errors involve miscommunications between caregivers during the transfer of patients. My guest today has investigated and written about the key issues behind these miscommunications and how patient-centered, value-based care can address these issues. This is ReachMD. I'm Dr. Matt Bernholtz. And joining me today is Dr. David Badalato, family physician and founder and CEO of Life Laboratory, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to research and education in quality models of care, and it's based in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Dr. Badalato authored an article published in Patient Safety and Quality Healthcare titled The Patient Family Journey from Outpatient to Inpatient, Improving Quality and Safety with the Outpatient EMR and PCP Collaboration. Dr. Badalato, welcome to you. Thank you. It's good to have you with us. So to start, how was this paper that you wrote um, motivated? But before we even get into that, um, I mentioned this 80% uh, statistic, you know, and it's a daunting statistic um, by miscommunications and serious um, issues that arise from that. That was actually a preface in your paper. That's how, sort of how you began your paper to roll out some of your thoughts. What can you tell me about that statistic and what it meant to you to make that an introductory part of your paper? That just reinforced my experience. So my experience hopefully has always been to never miss the opportunity to walk the journey with the patient and their family. So we do well, the patient, the family, and I, my colleagues, my practice, we do well in primary care, but sometimes the patient has to leave us and go into the hospital often, most often, entering through the emergency room. Then from the emergency room to admission. Then doctor to doctor, nurse to nurse, and so on. The journey continues and ends with discharge planning. But let's go back to the beginning. We are informed that the patient is going to the emergency room most of the time, or we are informed that they are there. Preferably, we know before they are there because of our relationship with the patient and the family. Our model is to call the hospital, speak to the intake person, give them our contact number to return a communication after the patient is evaluated. We also send an electronic medical record, what's called medical summary, which is highlighted with allergies, immunizations, medical problems, medications. But there's a person-to-person handoff, and there's a medical record handoff. So that hopefully, if you were the patient, you would arrive, and they would say, Hello, Matt. We were expecting you. We heard from Dr. Badalotto. We have your medical records. We are here to take care of you, and we are prepared to do so. At each handoff, there's an opportunity to make it informative and personal. There's also the opportunity for the feedback loop to have a healthcare professional talk to me, and that happens. And it may happen several times, and that's good. But there's also clearly an opportunity for a number of um, breaks in that cycle of feedback, uh, which create some of these miscommunications, which lead to the serious medical errors. What are some of the barriers that you've uncovered to being able to implement this system, which seems really intuitive? It seems both uh, a, a very nice personal form of handoff and also sounds like there are opportunities for um, some automated methods of distributing and disseminating information so that nothing gets lost in the handoff. And you've identified both, but why is this not already being done in this day and age? I don't have an answer as to why it's not being done, but what I just described to you is the exception. So our patient, family, physician, provider journey is not the norm. So it was the absence of that kind of journey 
that I continued to observe in the system that stimulated, inspired me to write the article. Because the opportunity for person-to-person -person communication, healthcare professional to healthcare professional, and the medical record is not a standard for the journey today, as I have observed. And the article that was written that quoted the 80% of serious medical errors occur because of miscommunications at handoff reflect that that's not the journey, but intuitively should be the journey. And a lot of your paper was really dedicated to improving awareness, um, understanding of the patient-centered medical home and the value-based care that comes from it as opposed to the service-based care models. It's widely been talked about past 10 years. We've done a fair amount of content where we discussed the idea, the concept, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the dream of moving in that direction. But fast forward to today, not really implemented. What's holding that back? I believe it is implemented in the outpatient experience when a patient has a medical home. It's that transfer, it's when the journey leaves primary care outpatient and becomes inpatient. That's where a workflow change has to occur. As you've said, it's intuitive. The reason for the article was to encourage what's intuitive and to continue what are we doing well as an outpatient? We can just continue that till the journey brings the patient back to the patient-centered medical home. Where do you see as the next steps, you know, based on some of the points you outlined in your paper, what do you see as some of the next steps for, let's say, a reader of the paper, a primary care practitioner, or a hospitalist, for instance, um, being able to galvanize around some of these ideas and address the issue of this handoff error? Hopefully the paper inspires the emergence of champions, outpatient primary care champions, emergency room champions, inpatient, physicians, nurses, nurse practitioners, discharge planners. In a recent discussion, it was pointed out to me that not only are we communicating technical information. Let's say you're allergic to penicillin. But we're communicating what makes this personal for you. What if you have a dog at home and no one to care for the dog? We as caregivers should know that. We should be empathetic to all personal issues or most personal issues that you want to share. Well, the people-to-people -people discussions not only talk about your medications and all of those other technical things, but who are you? So the patient-family journey should be a positive, memorable experience, albeit we feel most vulnerable, most frightened, et cetera, when we leave the outpatient arena and enter a hospital. What I love about that, uh, this, if we want to call it a granular view, is that um, it really puts the focus on where it's most important, which is right with the patient, right with the patient's family. Absolutely. Let me then flip it a little bit and ask you from a broader 30,000-foot view, which is to say, um, looking at uh, some aspects of your paper that argued alongside um, many other champions that have talked about the value and value-based care, saying this type of care will ultimately cost less, lead to better outcomes, all the ingredients are there to make a better healthcare system. Do you think the healthcare system, from the advocacy organizations to the policymakers in Capitol Hill, are moving in the right direction to help um, realize this vision that you outline in your paper? They're moving in the right direction, but to to borrow your word, it it is not sufficiently granular. To walk in the shoes of the patient is to understand how vital each touch point is and how vital getting the information correctly is. 
Well, Dr. Battle, Battle, we only have a couple of minutes left, but I want to offer up any other ideas that we haven't discussed, any parting comments you want to leave for our audience regarding this particular subject. I think that the improvement of the patient family journey, the improvement of the handoffs, the improvement of the touch points is also a very, very important, valued, appreciated experience for the health care giver, for the health professional. How much better is it for them to have that kind of information and understanding of the patient? That's well, a great parting comment. And with that, I want to thank my guest, Dr. David Badalato, for joining me to discuss what may ultimately be the cornerstone in the movement towards better care in our country. Dr. Badalato, thanks again for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. For access to this and other interviews on ReachMD, join us at ReachMD.com, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank you.